glory would fill this place. This place being wherever this worship experience is taking place, not just here, but in cars and homes, in various places. Let your glory fill each place. We lift your name on this day that the world has set aside to call Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. We as the people of God celebrate the resurrection of our Savior every day. Yes, Lord God. And so Lord, we pray to God that this day would be what you would have it be in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives, yes, Lord. so that we would be extensions of the ever building work mm -hmm. of the kingdom. Yes, God. We love you. Yes, we do. We praise you. Amen. We thank you. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name Jesus we pray. Name. Amen. Amen. And praise his holy thank name. Thank you, Jesus. We praise God. We'll be back Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, we pray that you would allow that place to be the sanctuary. Amen. Sacred place. Whether it's your car, there are cars all over the parking lot. Whether it's at home, I've talked to a member who's at home on a computer, one of our senior members. Uh, there are others who are watching from various states. Let this be a sacred place. And treat that place just like you would if you were in the house of God. Amen. We're going to be blessed today to be a blessing mm -hmm. as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I just want to ask, we won't hear it, but just those who are watching Facebook Live, who are in the parking lot, just blow your horn. That's your amen. And those who are here in the sanctuary, we say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our praise team will come to us now.
to be praised. Yes, yes. He is. Oh God, our Father, make me now a living echo of your tongue, so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yes, Lord God. Make me sit down that your spirit would stand forward, that the spotlight would not shine too brightly on me, but that I would be a light to shine on heaven's hero, Calvary's conqueror. And I'll be careful enough to give you credit, glory, and praise, for it's in you that I live, move, and have my being. Marvelous name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I'm delighted to be proclaiming the word on today. I was scheduled to preach Good Friday at 16th Street Baptist Church and I was scheduled to preach this morning at New Hope Baptist Church and because of this virus neither service was held mm -hmm. but I'm glad to be here. Amen. Yeah. Praise his holy name. John chapter 19, verse 30. John chapter 19, verse 30 says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Amen. Amen. I want to, for a few moments, just talk about God's response to death. God's response to death. Amen. Some of the best things come out of the worst things. We grieve the worst, but often the worst is an incubator to what's best. Babies are born out of a woman going to the valley of the shadow of death. Thomas Paine said, and I now say, <clears throat> these are the times that try men's souls. Charles Dickens wrote, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Calvary, what if that Friday leading up to Calvary was a horrible day? Calvary, yeah. that Friday we now call Good Friday, yeah, yeah. was on that Friday the worst of times. Yeah. How ironic that the two holy days the church celebrates are those days where Jesus is found in weakness. Yeah. Right. The first occurred in an unsanitary stable, not fit for a human, certainly not a newborn baby. Right. Yet in his weakness, yes, the angels left their celestial choir stand yeah. and began their earthly tour in Bethlehem and declared glory to God in the highest all right. and on earth peace, Amen. goodwill to all men. Yes, the worst of times. Yeah. gave way to the best of times. Yeah. At Calvary, yeah. our Savior, beaten, bruised, and bloody, became for those who reviled him a mascot for their mockery. Yeah. They laughed at him. Yeah. They derided him. They made fun of him yeah. on Calvary. Yeah. The trilogy of Psalms, the Messianic Psalms, Psalm 22, 23 and 24 that talk about the suffering Savior, the shepherd, and Psalm 24, the king. Yeah. Psalm 22, the suffering Savior. Psalm 23, the shepherd. And then Psalm 24, the king of glory. Yeah. But in Psalm 22 and 7, the psalmist says, All who see me mock me. They hurl insults shaking their heads. Christ, in his weakness, has produced lasting holy days mm -hmm. for the church to celebrate. Amen. All over the world, mm -hmm. 
Easter is celebrated, but Easter is necessary. Easter is only possible because Calvary was necessary. <clears throat> if you take Calvary off the calendar, there is no Easter. So in his weakness, the worst of times produced the best of times. God responds to death. We love to talk about life, but the reality is this Christian faith not only addresses life, the Christian faith addresses death. A few days ago, I was told that my friend since childhood, Pastor Charles Lawrence, had died. I grieved. And then after I grieved, I posted. And then after I posted, got information from the family that the record of his death was not true. He'd been rushed to the hospital. Mm. So I grieved, and it wasn't true. Yeah. By the time I got through the grief, the report came back that he had died. All right. I had to deal twice with the death of one person. Mm -hmm. Shortly thereafter, while dealing with the reality of his death, I received word of the death of Pastor Tommy Chappelle, mm -hmm. whose life and ministry I value with the highest regard. Yes, he spoke loftily to me on more than one occasion speaking into my ministry. But because of this virus, this pandemic, I couldn't even go to the fam to the to the homegoing service as I would have desired to pay my last respects. Death again. So dealing with Pastor Lawrence's death and then dealing with Pastor Chappelle's death, despite all seeking to pull some things together to help this church continue carrying out its mission despite this being the worst of times. Right. It's the worst of times, but because of Christ, this church has to be an extension of making this the worst of times the best of times. Right. And so in the meantime, after going walking, I noticed while walking an ingrown toenail I've had them before, so I took this one mistakenly, lightly. I kind of pulled it out while doing something else. And in the meantime, that toe got infected. That infection led to my ankle. That happened on a Friday evening, that Saturday. I was in bed, sleep, not just in bed, but in bed, sleep about 16 hours. Came here the next day and from this pulpit preached the word. Yeah. Decided that Monday that I would just take it easy, rest myself, and let it recover. And Monday morning I got messages reminding me of some commitments I had made. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go and carry out those commitments and put too much on that foot. Mm -hmm. And got home Monday night and couldn't stand up. Yeah. And literally could not walk could not stand. And while that's going on, uh, Pastor Harry Blake, mm -hmm. whom I had spoken to the week before, who told me that he was ill but getting better, mm -hmm. I got the word that he had gone on to glory. All right. Death again. Mm -hmm. Death, death, death. Even this morning, receiving word of a loved one dying and and so one of the pastors I called to get information about the well-being of somebody else, he texted and said, man, I'm in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Death, death, sickness, sickness, yeah. worst of times. Mm -hmm. But just because it's the worst of times yeah. doesn't mean it can't be the best of times. Amen. Life can come out of death even as death comes out of life. When things get bad in the physical, it doesn't mean that they can't get good in the spiritual. When things don't look good on the surface, it doesn't mean they can't get better in the spirit. Imagine things for these disciples. Oh, I feel sympathetic towards these disciples. Because they made the mistake that perhaps you and I would have made as well. 
they were with Jesus who had been speaking to them about his own death. I think of Mark King and Malcolm X who told those who were close to him before that death that death was nearby. And I wonder how many of them really took it seriously. Jesus had been saying to his disciples, the time of my departure is at hand. And he summoned them in Gethsemane, called them there, nine in one area, and he went a little farther with three, his inner circle, Peter, James, and John. But even with them, he went a little farther. And when he finished praying, he found them sleeping. They didn't take him seriously. They didn't realize the seriousness of the moment. And because they didn't realize the seriousness of the moment, they fell asleep. And now they're watching him on Calvary, beaten, bruised, and bloodied. Oh, what a tragedy it must have been. And what a tragedy it is for us who hear the words from someone declaring their imminent death. And we make the mistake of not taking it seriously. And then we have to watch them die. Imagine his mother forced to digest all that goes into having the Son of God for a child. One thing that it meant to have the Son of God for as a child, it, mean, it meant watching the life of the eternal squeezed into a short 33 years. Eternal squeezed into 33 years. Imagine that woman with an issue of blood whose bowing touch, her bowing touch uh, led to the healing from his garment. It wasn't that there was healing in the garment, it was that the garment was on the hill. And because of that, she knew that this life squeezed into 33 years, but this life had transformed her life so that now she's changed forever. But now he's being brutally beaten and lynched. Imagine that woman with an issue of blood who had an incurable disease. She had gone from doctor to doctor, had spent all and nothing had helped. She had an incurable disease, and yet she had an interaction with the master. All right. And her incurable disease was transformed into an unchangeable wholeness. Imagine that maniac of Gadara, who met Jesus while screaming in a cemetery and cutting himself. Now the one who means everything to him put his right mind back in him. So that he could leave the cemetery and go home and tell his friends and family what had happened to him. And now the testimony of the, the, the changed life because of his interaction with Jesus. Imagine how he felt watching this same Jesus being lynched and martyred. And there's nothing he can do for him. And while this is going on, death surrounds the, the area. Death and the pain of death impacts the lives of all who've been touched by Jesus. And what question would you have? What question would I have? My question would be, oh God, where are you? I wonder, have you ever been there? I wonder if you're there now in this season. God, where are you? There are some who are declaring that God sent this virus to judge the world. There are others who are saying we've got to pray and ask God to take this virus away because it's sent by the devil. And people are asking the question, God, where are you? Well, at Calvary, mm -hmm. he was silent. All right. He was silent not only at Calvary, but he was silent in Bethlehem. Isn't it strange that he was silent in Bethlehem, but spoke up at Jesus' baptism? Isn't it strange that he, he was silent on Mount Calvary, but he spoke on the mountain of transfiguration? Isn't it strange that God was silent in Jesus' weakest moments? Right. 
that's one of the issues that is sometimes difficult for us to deal with. And this is why I hold preaching and us gathering so in, in such high regard because sometimes we're going through our weakest moments and God is silent. Yeah. And we've got to find some way to get something to hold on to yeah. until God speaks up. Sometimes that happens to all of us that we are weak and God is silent. Yeah. But even in his silence, he still wants to be heard. Mm -hmm. That's one of the juxtapositions of the faith. God can be silent and still want to be heard. Yeah. How can he be silent and still want to be heard? Well, it's because when he's silent, he wants to speak through his servants. I think I'll say it again. I said when he's silent, yeah. he wants to speak through his servants. Yeah. Calvary, yeah. worst of times. Yeah. Calvary, yeah. Christ is bruised, beaten, and bloody. Yeah. Calvary, yeah. a day that knew two midnights. Yeah. For it was not only midnight at midnight, but it was midnight at midday. Right. Calvary, yeah. and God is silent. But is it really silent? Right. Because Jesus says, yeah. it is finished. Yeah. It is finished. Yeah. Teleo, in the Greek word, or uh, telestai, it really, in the Greek, is more powerful than we hear it in the King James Version because in the Greek, it's really just one word. Mm -hmm. In the King James Version, it's, it is finished. Yeah. But in the Greek, he screams, finished. Yeah. All right. What power is in that? That, yeah. that, that while he's facing the worst of times, yeah. he exclaims, finish! Yeah. Sometimes that's how God is speaking, that the one who's going through the suffering is the one who can define the suffering. Yeah. The one who's going through the difficulty is the one who can define the difficulty. Yes, we're going through. Yes, we're facing it. But finish! Jesus speaks so that God speaks through his son. Yeah. Finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. No more need to sacrifice lambs at the altar. The last drop that's necessary has been spilled at Calvary. Yes. Amen. Finished. Yeah. The highway has been of opens for Jew and Greek to have all access to the Father. Finished. No one can be justified by the works of the flesh. It's all by grace. Finish. Yeah. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. God speaks even when he's silent because he speaks through his servants. Yeah. God speaks through the dying in death. Oh, bless his name. Amen. Uh, that's a shot point right there. That God speaks through the dying in death. Oh, I, can I count the times that I've gone to visit someone who was sick and when I'm getting out of my car, I'm praying and asking God to give me the words to say to speak faith to them and they end up speaking faith to me. Right. Sometimes it's at our lowest that God is able to lift others. Sometimes when it's darkest, God can use us to be a light. Yeah. And here, Jesus speaks. And by Jesus speaking, we can understand the heart of God even in Jesus' death. Uh -huh. yeah. Jesus speaks through the dying and death, saying to the living that his redemptive work is not only operated through life, but also through death. God works in death just like he does in life. In fact, death not only follows life, but life follows death. I hope y'all caught that there. That death not only follows life, but life follows death. Because death is not a destination, death is a transition. Death is not where I end up. Death is where I got to go through. It, that's, that's another life on the other side and that life is better than any life that I'll experience on this side so tell us that yeah. finished yeah. 
But that's not a cry of defeat. That's an announcement of victory. Finish. He couldn't finish by turning water into wine. He had to go to Calvary for that. Amen. Finish. He couldn't finish by opening blinded eyes. But at Calvary, he was able to declare, it is finished. Yes. I serve uh -huh. a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living. Whatever men may say, I feel his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need, he's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. You ask me how. I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I know But you got to wave your hand or clap your hands and rejoice that even in death, death is not the end of the story. Even in sickness, sickness is not the end of the story. He lives. Oh, he lives. Yes, he lives. Yes. Yes.
bring him to the resurrection. Oh God, our Father, we thank you so much for your word today. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you so much that you responded to death by speaking through the one dying. You respond to our pain by speaking through us as we go through the pain. You speak through those who are going through. We bless your name. Yes, we do, God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.
holy name. Praise his holy name. King of my life, I crown thee now. If there's any person who has not given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that from wherever you are. Just confess to the Lord in prayer that I believe that you died on the cross and that God raised you from the dead. I confess my sins and I want to be a Christian. Jesus Christ will save you quicker than right now and sooner than at once. That, that process is as simple as ABC. It is acknowledged that I'm a sinner. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess him with your mouth. And so if you are watching and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, just repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner, but I believe that Christ died on the cross for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. And I confess him as Lord. I want to be a Christian. Save me. In fact, thank you, Lord, that I am saved. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, if you've done that, find you a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church where your spiritual needs can be ministered to and your spiritual gifts can be exercised. And on that night, Jesus took the bread